you already know how to solve differential equations when it's a function of x like that. Ta-da! But what if it was a function of y like that? That's what this video is about. It's not too difficult, but there are some tricks to it. I'm going to start off this video with an exceptionally simple example, but we're going to ramp it up pretty quickly. So stick around for the harder ones at the end. So first, the theory that's going to underpin this video. If we've got the derivative of y with respect to x as a function of y, we can take the reciprocal of the left and right hand sides. Now when we do that, we've got the derivative of x with respect to y, the reciprocal of what we started with. Now once we've got that, we can solve it for x by saying that x by itself will be equal to the integral of 1 over f of y with respect to y. Now obviously we're going to be able to find the integral of that, and once we've got the integral of that, we're going to have x equal to something, something, something y. Once we have x equals something, something, some function of y, we can then rearrange that to turn it into y equals something, something, something x. And that is the process. That's what we're going to do in this video. So first example, we're going to find the general solution of this differential equation, and you'll notice that it's a function of y. Now, I really want to be pedantic here, so I'm just going to put a little bit extra in here. This differential equation only works where y is between negative 1 and 1, and you can figure out why that is because of that square root sign. Larger values, negative 2, positive 2, won't work here. Okay, but for the most part, we can kind of ignore this restriction and just get started here. Our first step was to take the reciprocal of both sides. So dy dx becomes dx dy, and this becomes 1 over that. Now, after that, we're integrating that function so we can find out what x is. Just be careful here, it is a function of y, so you're integrating it with respect to y. Now this is an integral we know. It's just arc sine or inverse sine y, not x, because this is a function of y. Now, don't forget, there is a plus c sitting on the end here. Okay, so we've done all of that, we've now got x equals a function of y. x equals a function of y. Our next step is to blah 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 rearrange, and then we'll have y equals something. So, the blah 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 rearrange is going to be x minus c equals inverse sine y. And then that means that y is going to be sine x minus c. This is really the first time I think that you've seen c sort of end up sitting inside of a function. This is the answer by the way, I am finished. This is the solution, the general solution of our question. Now here's example two, it looks simple enough, but it's going to get a little bit complicated. Now you might be looking at the restriction I've created and going, wait a minute, there's no restriction on this, that's just a linear equation. The restriction comes in when we get our solution done. Alright, so first of all, we need a reciprocal, we don't want dy dx, we want dx dy, and we want 1 over that. Once we have that, we want to take an integral uh, with respect to y, because it's the function of y. Now this is an integral you should be familiar with, it's going to be x is equal to 1 half ln 2y plus 1, absolute value because it's got to be positive in there, and then don't forget a plus c. Okay, so that's looking pretty good so far. We're at this stage of our little process. Now we need to rearrange, and this is where this one gets a little bit thorny, and we add in a, a new technique that we've never done before. Now in the interest of space, I'm going to do sort of two steps at once. This is going to be x minus c. But I can also divide both sides by a half. When I divide this side by a half, that's the same as multiplying by 2. And I get an ln 2y plus 1 there. Okay, that rearrangement feels pretty good. Uh, next up, I write this in exponential form. So e to the power of that will equal that. Now we're approaching the bit you've never really seen before. We've got e to the power of 2 bracket x minus c equals 2y plus 1. I'm just going to expand those brackets, which will make it e to the 2x minus 2c. Now, this is the bit that you kind of, kind of wrap your noodle around. We've got e to the 2x minus 2c. That is the same as e to the 2x times e to the negative 2c. Okay, index laws. Um, now, this, this bit, this bit's the bit. Look at this e to the 2x. Okay, that's a function of x. So just let that be for a second. But what about e to the negative 2c? e is a number, 2 point something something. Negative 2 is obviously a number. And c is an arbitrary constant. It's 1, it's 2, it's 5, it's 7, it's negative 9. It's all of those values, right? So we've shoved 
positive c in here as an arbitrary constant. This is a number raised to an arbitrary constant. That makes this an arbitrary constant. So in that way, I can just let e to the negative c, 2c, equal a, a, a number. And when I do that, this equation becomes a e to the 2x equals 2y plus 1. And why do we do it? Well, it's just because it's, it's superfluous to have this e to the negative 2c here. c is everything. So, and this is just ends up being an everything number anyway, so let's just consolidate it into this, this everything number. Okay, once we've got that, we just rearrange it. We, we can finish this off now. So that's really simple to rearrange. So that's it, that's finished, it's done. Um, there's probably just one thing I just need to backtrack just for a moment and show you something. I said this, this thing here didn't make a lot of sense when we were getting started. But as we move through the bits, we get this absolute value here, ln 2y plus 1. And then I was a little bit lazy, and then I just took e to both sides and ended up with that positive 2y plus 1 there. That, that is positive, because we were told at the start that y is greater than or equal to negative a half. If y is greater than or equal to negative a half, this value will always be positive. Right? If we put in any value greater than negative a half, that value is always going to be positive. If, if that was turned around, this value would have been negative, and then this would have, that would have flowed through, and we would have gotten a negative outside of that, that there. All right, so just to be really, really on the ball, that's where that information came in. Here we go, last one. The algebra gets a bit wild here, but also a little bit uh, tedious. So I'll jump through some of the more boring algebra as we go. First step, reciprocals. Once we've got that, x equals the integral. Now, 1 minus y squared is a difference of two squares, which means that that is equal to 1 plus y, 1 minus y on the bottom, which means that it's a partial fraction. Now, I don't have time to do partial fractions, so do the partial fraction, and you've got the integral of 1 over 2, 1 minus y plus 1 over 2, 1 plus y, integrating both of those, you get these two natural logs here, and then don't forget your plus c on the end. Now you might be thinking, shouldn't I have some absolute values around those natural logs? No, because we were given this information in the beginning, and because y is between negative 1 and 1, these are going to definitely be positive. Okay, now that we've done that, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to have to start we're here right now, we're going to have to start rearranging it. Now the obvious first step is to take that plus c and move it to the other side, x minus c. Now these terms have a common factor of one half, so I can put that one half out there, but then you need to be a little bit careful. Look at this one first, it's positive, I've put out the half, so let's get some brackets going on. This is positive ln one plus y, and with the half out the front, this is negative ln one minus y. So what we have is a log, minus a log. And a log minus a log gives us something that looks like that, that divided by that. That's log laws. Okay, now that we've done that, uh, what can I do? That half there, let's get it over to the other side, and we have something that looks like this. Now that we've got it in terms of something equals a log, we can rearrange that into exponential form. e to the power equals something. e to the 2x minus 2c, I've expanded that as we go, equals 1 plus y over 1 minus y. And this looks like the previous example, this little minus 2c. So we know that we can separate e to the 2x and e to the negative 2c. We know that e to the negative 2c is just an arbitrary number, and we can replace e to the negative 2c with a. That leaves me with a e to the 2x equals 1 plus y over 1 minus y. Whew. Okay, what can I do now? Multiply both sides by 1 minus y. Expand those brackets. Now group any terms with y in. Once we've got the y's on one side, we can factorize them out. And finally, we can get y by itself by dividing both sides by the bracket. That's the correct answer, but it doesn't look as neat as it could. I'm just going to swap those. Ah, that's more satisfying. There we go. The general solution of dy dx equals 1 minus y squared is that one right there. Now it's important to note that 
a lot of what I've done there is just stuff that you know, algebraic manipulation. Really where like the algebraic manipulation starts is right about here. All of that. This is only the new stuff that this video covers. This is stuff, just manipulating stuff. Okay, that is solving differential equations in the form dy dx equals f of y.